Hi, welcome to Simply Nas Media. Today we're going to take a look at the Synology DS1515 Plus. In the same family as the DS1815 Plus, these two units are Synology's flagship models. They've always been around. Um, the predecessor was, of course, the 1513 Plus. This comes equipped with an Intel Atom quad core 2.4 GHz processor, a lot of power for a little 4 bay. Um, 2 GB of RAM is stock. You can upgrade this to either 4 or 6 GB, 6 GB being your max. Um, this is done by a 2 gig or a 4 gig slot, so basically allowing you to upgrade the RAM as, which you can do whilst you're doing our NASPIT testing and buying the configured unit, well, of course, test and upgrade the RAM for you. Um, the unit houses five hard drives, be it 2.5 inch, 3.5 inch HDD supporting SATA 2 and SATA 3, and of course, 2.5 inch SSD. Uh, the unit can also support up to two SSDs for SSD caching. Basically, you'll take up two bays. If you do two, you can do one as well. Um, if you're going to do any type of SSD caching, it is recommended you upgrade the RAM to max. Um, otherwise, you won't really see the benefits of the SSD cache. Uh, SSD cache typically on a 5 bay, I mean, you don't need a hard drive bigger than 250 gig for SSD cache. Um, SSD cache will again help with front end applications, um, VMware backups, uh, data backups, any type, of, any type of data that you're backing up as well as the option of any type of AutoCAD software that you're running. If, for instance, you download the Dropbox application that's available for Synology, SSD cache will help in terms of syncing with the Dropbox. It doesn't take up too much resource from your processor or your RAM then. Um, this, is this, is in, this is important in terms of when we're doing, let's say, I'm doing a data backup and somebody's trying to stream a video. The SSD caching, that's when it really comes into play when the unit is being stretched in terms of its resources. Keep in mind, it is an Atom processor inside, so it's not the fastest NAS you're ever going to get, but it's very applicable for small businesses and home users. Um, you don't really need anything faster than that when you're in that type of environment. Um, this will allow you to do your general centralizing of your files. Um, you can also do backups from every PC in the office. Uh, the main aspects that Office use them for are the MyCloud services. If you have people on, on the, in the field, um, you can send them the files and they can download them. The other option is, of course, they can log into the NAS themselves and upload whatever they have on the field rather than having to upload it when they come back to the office from whatever they're doing. Um, that's a useful feature because then you don't have to bring people from the field back in. They can just stay in the field and carry on their jobs. Um, home users, again, media is your best, best friend on this. Um, the 1515 and the 1815 specifically are very media geared NASAs. Um, that's what they were always intended for when they launched, I believe, I think it was the 1511 series. Um, slowly, Synology been progressing their media aspects of their NAS and their usability. This makes it very easy for a home user to get into the NAS market, um, understand what a NAS is, how to use it, what type of features you can get out of a NAS. A NAS is no longer just a simple network attached storage device that you just back up your files to. It's become a lot more of that. It's more applicable as a network server now. Um, in a sense, it allows you to do any type of media streaming. It allows you to back up your phones to the NAS. Um, it allows you to back up Dropbox. It allows you to back up any type of sync services that you have. This basically means your data is secure. Um, the biggest issue a home user has is we back up all of our photos of our PC and they sit on our PC. Um, a hard drive crashes and we've lost everything. Uh, data recovery services are too expensive. So this just centralizes your file storage. You can do SHR, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, and if you want really a lot of redundancy, you can do RAID 10 as well. Keep in mind, RAID 10 is always going to be your fastest RAID as well, so if you want performance, RAID 10 is also the way to go. For ease of use, SHR is the best thing to do for a home user, especially if you're new to NAS and getting into it. SHR allows you to install, let's say, two hard drives to start with. We can do three terabyte drives for now. Uh, don't need any more storage room. You'll start off with SHR, which will mimic a RAID 1, so give you a mirror. When you expand, you don't even need to go to three terabyte drives. You can go to four, five, six, even eight terabyte drives. Bring them into this unit and expand the RAID array and add them in. No other NAS will do this for you. No other NASes can mix and match. Um, it's very much Synology's proprietary RAID. Don't be scared because it is a proprietary RAID. Synology have created it off a RAID 5 subset. So from that aspect, it's still knowledge that everybody has um, in terms of recovery services. Um, but we find Synology hybrid RAID to be easier to use for a novice user or for someone who's not too technical and doesn't want to get too involved with their NAS. Um, Synology hybrid RAID is probably the best way to, let's say, set up your NAS, 
Um, I've got my NAS, I've set it up, I've thrown all my media on, I've got their DLNA services turned on, I never want to touch my NAS again, the Synology hybrid range really is a way for you to go. Uh, if you plan on tinkering, I mean, you, you can still use SHR, but the traditional range sets are probably a bit more flexible if you want to tinker with the NAS. Um, aside from the SSD cache, the CPU performance, um, you get about 300 megabytes a second read and write out of this unit, so it is extremely fast for a 5 bay. 5 bays typically don't go above 200, 250. Uh, so from that aspect, Blu-ray movies are absolutely fine to stream over the network because the NAS does have the power and capability to do so. Um, 1080p resolution, you can also have all your subtitles stored on here and they'll play as well. Um, as usual, at Simply NAS, we recommend Plex Media Player. Um, Plex Media Server will allow you to serve all media files from your NAS, ease of use of setup, serve it to a TV, serve it to a device, um, iOS device. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One have recently also got support for that, so that's a next generation device. Even Roku will support it. The only thing a NAS doesn't support is an Apple TV for the simple reason Apple have closed their ecosystem and Apple TVs don't access network devices, nor are they DLNA compatible. Um, however, the NAS in itself comes with an inbuilt iTunes server, so that is your way around the DLNA compatibility if you do own an Apple TV already. Uh, you just simply enable the iTunes server and this will serve to your Apple TV using the iTunes server. Uh, this is important in terms of people with Mac environments. Um, the NAS is by no means a Windows or a Linux environment, only it works absolutely fine on Mac OS X. Um, also has built-in Apple filing protocol with Bonjour services, so you don't even need to use SMB to connect to the NAS, which is primarily a Windows service. You can use your regular native Apple Talk. Um, the AFP file system is absolutely fine in terms of talking. Uh, there is external drive support. Supports EXT4, EXT3, FAT32 and NTFS. The new thing with the 15 series is it supports HFS+. Plus. Again, important for Mac users because we only format on HFS Plus on Mac. Um, it will support journal and non-journal. However, it does not support encrypted because only Mac can decrypt that. Um, Linux devices too can decrypt it, but once again, they haven't got that protocol built into the NAS. The NAS is Linux based. Um, that's what makes it heterogeneous in the environment and able to work with Windows and Mac as well. Um, a Linux based operating system, Synology give you free upgrades for life in terms of the firmware. Uh, they'll never charge you for an upgrade on the firmware. Uh, currently, we sit at DSM 5.2, I believe. Um, DSM 5.2 allows you ease of use. Um, if you're used to using a smartphone, you're used to using Synology's operating system already. Uh, it'll provide you with icons on your desktop. There is, of course, categories you can delve further into, but I mean, generally, the icons that you're going to need for setup and for general usage are all on your desktop. Uh, they also give you a nice dashboard to see how the performance of the NAS is going and how your space is, how much space you've got left, how much you're utilizing. What tasks are utilizing CPU performance? If you feel your NAS isn't performing up to task, you can go in there and see if something's hugging it. Um, I will say Dropbox Sync is a major hug. If you're going to do any type of Dropbox Sync, we do recommend upgrading the RAM, maybe even going as far as SSD cache if your Dropbox goes over about 50 gig. Um, I believe pro users can go all the way up to 10 terabytes now, so that's a lot of data you can put on Dropbox. But if you're gonna back it up to the NAS, then be sure to upgrade the RAM. Um, aside from that, let's take a look at the back and we'll see what's on the back of the unit. Okay, taking a look at the back of the unit, here you have your power cable. Um, any type of PC cable will actually fit into it. Synology do, of course, give you a cable with it. Um, at the bottom here, you have your two eSATA ports. The Synology has the capability of supporting up to two DX513s. This allows you to expand on the fly on your NAS. Um, You've got four RJ45s now as opposed to the two RJ45s that the predecessor had. This will allow you to do any type of failover on the NAS. Um, you can do failover and full link aggregation, it's up to you how you want to do it. Or of course you can have four separate IP addresses going into the NAS as well. Um, four separate IP addresses can be beneficial if let's say you want clients on a different type of IP address. Or there's people that you want to send data through one IP address and send data through another. This will just balance the load basically on the NAS. Not everything's going through one IP address, not everything's going through one RJ45. Of course, you've also got your four USB ports here. These are USB 3.0. There are no longer any USB 2.0 ports on the Synology NAS. Um, USB 3.0 is, of course, backward compatible. You can add your external hard drives. Again, remember these aren't USB hosts. These external hard drives will not add to the capacity of the NAS. They will simply 
gives you the functionality to back up your external hard drive to or back up the NAS to an external hard drive if your external hard drive is big enough or if it has the space. The reset button, don't be scared of the reset button. The reset button doesn't reset your NAS, it doesn't kill your RAID array. The reset button simply is to reset them if you've forgotten your password. Um, the only way to kill the RAID array is manually either going in and killing the RAID array in the web UI or pulling out a hard drive while the NAS is on. Um, remember with RAID, one hard drive won't crash. But if you pull up two or three hard drives and you don't have the correct RAID set, that will crash your RAID array. There's also Kensington Lock. So this is, this is important for more businesses as opposed to home. We don't really use this at home. Um, let's say we're in a business environment, CPA, healthcare. Uh, Kensington Lock is very important to you. Uh, the, hard, the unit does support hardware encryption. However, the K-Lock, of course, is a hardware lock in itself. Um, means nobody can mess with your NAS, basically. Um, so that's very important for more people in sensitive environments. Okay, that was taking a look at the back of the unit. Um, the Synology 1515 Plus, once again, same family as the DS1815 Plus, just depends on how many bays you'd like. Um, the 5 bay, of course, both units support DX513s. Um, you can add up to two of these. This will, with six terabyte drives, I mean, you get whopping capacity out of this little 5 bay NAS now. In essence, it becomes a 15 bay NAS to yourself. Um, give us a call. We'd love to speak to you whether you have any questions about this video. Whether you have any questions about the DS1515 Plus, if you're looking for a specific configuration or setup, we'd love to help you out. You, you can always reach us. Um, our phone number is 407-960-4690. And we answer emails. We're always keen to help. Our email address is sales at simplynash.com. As always, thank you for tuning in. Like and subscribe, like our video, and please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see any future videos. That way we can send you updates on what we post. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.